Hello everyone who are watching us from the Astrid Inc. It's a very great pleasure to have you uh, here at the African Business Information Bank and their Professional Training Center. With me here is uh, Dr. Kennedy Tumenta, who is the CEO of the institution. Sir, it's a pleasure to have you. It's always a pleasure to be with Astrid Inc. Thank you for coming. Okay, so we're visiting this institution. We discovered that it's uh, such a very, very wonderful institution with the kind of training that they offer to fellow Cameroonians. It is an institution that uh, Africans should know. It's an institution that many Cameroonians should know because what is offered here is just what Africa needs to reach to the next level. But I know very well, or we know very well, that you don't yet know uh, much about this institution. And this is why we're taking this opportunity to talk to the CEO so that he actually tells us what is happening here, what they offer here. So, so, so what is uh, offered in this uh, institution? What is uh, the African Business Information Bank and what is their training, their professional training center all about? Yeah, the African Business Information Bank uh, is an initiative that was founded by African in the diaspora. In fact, our basic contribution was to reconnect Africans to the global economy and make sure that African solution for Africans' problem could be uh, brought to the limelight. In fact, as you could understand, uh, information in the 21st century is very, very crucial. And business and credible information is something which is fundamental for decision making. Uh, the African Business Information Bank, at the origin, uh, was created to uh, provide credible, traceable, actionable information uh, necessary for Africans uh, in the diaspora, Africans SMEs, Africans um, uh, in the informal sectors, as well as policymakers to take. Uh, to get access to actionable uh, information to provide uh, the necessary decision for sustainable development of the continent. Looking at the 2008 financial crisis, the subprime uh, crisis, uh, you, we, we, we discovered that people had a lot of money. We had a lot of liquidity in the market and we had less bankable project, less bankable, uh, less credible information where we could find the projects. So it was a very important thing for us to rethink and go back to our traditional African society to provide an innovative solution to solve a global crisis problem, which is, uh, was about asymmetric information, meaning lack of credible information for people to carry out activities. Uh, the second thing is that uh, we are having a lot of unemployment in the African continent. The private sector development is very, very slow. To have credible information on the informal sector is very, very slow. Therefore, we thought it wise to send the African colleagues and partners in the, on the ground to look for this information, uh, structure this information, classify this information, and provide it in a way that is needed by both national, regional, continental, as well as global investors. So as you can see, it's an information bank. It is not a data bank. It's an information banking system because the return on investment is actually uh, the return on credible information, which otherwise uh, could have been very expensive due to uh, some of the moral hazards and a risk of having not uh, a wrong information. So you get to the African Business Information Bank, you are looking for credible information on sectors and people and certification, and we provide that for you. I must say that this is very wonderful because uh, we get investors who come to the country and they have a problem with information. So definitely you are helping them a lot or your services can be of great help to them. But since you started, what has been the appreciation so far from, the, uh, from those that you intend to serve? We have attracted, for Cameroon in Central Africa, we have attracted uh, hundreds of investors uh, with a total of, of billions of dollars investment. Uh, we have also, in that direction, helped a lot of startups. So we also decided to, uh, within the information provision, we acted on four angles. So we have a business development department, which actually is upgrade. As you can imagine, uh, Emmanuel, you can verify and find uh, a lot of companies that are credible, 
but their businesses and the way they structure their businesses are not in a way that they can partners with uh, strategic uh, uh, partners that could help them uh, accelerate their growth. So you don't want to get into part uh, facilitate partnership with such partners. So what you want to do is to upgrade these companies, restructure them, as well as, and then you can create visibility and connect them. So visibility platform is important for us. That is why uh, we, our platform uh, today uh, give a, a visibility for many numerous African uh, uh, businesses, organizations, structures that just wants to show that they are credible. On the other side, we do B2B, business to business, meaning that we take uh, different partners, we connect them, we put them together. We have been uh, organizing the, in, in collaboration with other partners, the um, International uh, Agro uh, Industry Exhibition in Cameroon, Siali. Uh, we were at the beginning of SAGO, so uh, we supported ASIGA, uh, the Salon Action Governmental. We were with the Salon de Investissement de Cameroon. We have worked with NICAMEX, Nigerian Cameroon Exhibition. We have, uh, we have also worked uh, in collaboration with different institutions for their participation at PROMOTE. We have worked in the, in the Central African region, in the SADC region, in ECOWAS, in the Comesa, in the Umok area. So, so you see we are struggling to bring the Africans' information, the Africans' way of doing things, the Africans' know-how potentials beyond the natural resources to the gro global problem. So the, one thing we need to understand is that trade among Africa, intra-African trade, uh, prior to the, uh, to the African continental free trade um, uh, area and agreement, it was very, very low. So the trade among Africans were very, very low because sometimes us as Africans, we do not know that we don't know that we do not have information on our neighbors, on the countries around us. So today, uh, thanks to the job we have been doing since 2003 uh, with the African Business Information Bank in Europe, sensitizing diasporas to go home and create uh, uh, initiatives in the different African continent by implementing and testing our uh, projects, uh, we are now seeing that uh, entrepreneurship, business development, private sector development, women engagement in the, uh, economic development, as well as youth engagement in the development of uh, strategic sectors such as digital uh, startups are now taking place in, in, in the continent. That's, uh, that's so, so wonderful. And I must applaud the, the, the work that he's been doing. Uh, just to remind you that uh, Dr. Kennedy Tumenta is one of the Africans diaspora who returned uh, to his country and is actually doing a lot. He's the CEO of the African Business Information Bank. He's a senior researcher in economics and uh, uh, his works are so, so tremendous and they're causing a lot of impact. I think if when you look at the pictures around, you're going to see him with some former heads of states, with some heads of states uh, talking. So uh, just to make you know that uh, He's a man of high reputation, and he's also seen great men in the world. So, uh, so uh, since 2010 that you started, you're recently you decided to start with the African Business Information Bank Professional Training Center. What actually inspired you to go to this? You have to understand, as diasporas, we are messengers. So once you leave this continent as an African diaspora, so you find yourself around the world, you are a messenger. You're just representing a, uh, a whole lot of people with aspiration looking upon you. So when you get this knowledge out there, I, I was so fortunate to have uh, benefited from a very unique training from uh, Germany. Uh, I spent some time in the US, but during my stay in these countries, it took me a lot uh, to appreciate um, exposure to knowledge. So when you come back to your continent, you can't just go and do business as usual. Uh, so we wanted a platform where we could trans, uh, transmit or also offer, transfer some of the knowledge gain so that we should be called, so the whole paradigm of brain drain to brain gain. So in me, you see somebody who went out called brain drain, but he who came back and it was brain gain. Of course, paradigm shift. On one side, I was a brain gain from the Europeans, Americans, and so on, because they were benefiting from my African know-how and also contributing to the development of poli for policies in, the, in their continent. But again, with all this knowledge, you can't just uh, create an, uh, a trustworthy mechanism and sit there. 
we had to uh, provide our trainings to young people to make sure that they can also have aspiration, have the necessary tools to realize their dreams. So you have to understand that this came, uh, the Cameroon government uh, came to us saying that we have seen the products uh, of African beef because once you get into our company, we have to retrain you and we always try to make sure that there is a paradigm shift. First of all, the paradigm shift that most of the schools we have in many African countries teaches uh, young people on what to think. And when you say what to think, they copy uh, a cake knowledge on adapted uh, princi uh, uh, let's say concept and I try to adapt it within their natural environment, which is in the continent. But unfortunately, uh, we can force most of our schools out there to focus more on training us to see the African continent. Of course, they have to focus on training those students around them to interpret the reality around them as well as the global reality. So as an African, we always, as Africans, and uh, we always have this, uh, this insight questioning of the applicability of some of these concepts to our countries of origin, to our realities of origin. So this what to think has disturbed, destroyed a lot of creative uh, uh, mindset found within the continent. A lot of young people were aspired, but they are taught and given examples that they cannot relate, it, relate to. So, but the principles on how, uh, how to think, meaning it doesn't matter what you are being taught. You, they are the principles that matter. So principles of economics, the principles of management, the principles of social justice, the principles of justice, the principles of mass media, the principles of storytelling. Those principles are the same. The principles are the same, but they are the applicability of these principles into your reality that uh, uh, creates a new context. So we now start looking at how do we uh, get this idea of principle-based training to allow people to adapt at a at, at different level. Mr. Emmanuel, you have said, so, uh, if it's on political issues, I can uh, you know, uh, express myself. If it's on social issue, I can. Anthropological issue, I can, and so on and so forth. Economic issues, I'm there. The whole issue is, um, at a very early age in the Europe, we as diasporas came to understand that we do not need to, we need to use them as benchmark, but we need to create our own reality so that the benchmarking should be based on principles and results. The principles are almost the same. Uh, we also have principles of human interactions in Africa, but the, the, the whole idea of human interaction stays the same. So, so I think that uh, the United Nations organs, they saw the students that we train here, and they are, the way they do their research, the what they produce, the output that they do, and based on the fact that our training also takes into consideration uh, the so-called ethics and economic thinking, meaning that you know, we have to understand that economic tools uh, should be used to solve moral problems. So the whole concept of leadership, ethics, value, trust, responsibilities are part of our training. So once you have the principles on, on how to think, we have to give to you now the different uh, institutional, societal uh, assets necessary for you to interact with others, which is trust and ethics. So, you know, the whole African Ubuntu idea, I am because you are, you are because I am. If I want to go far, I go with people. If I want to go fast, I go alone. So all of these issues is now being ingrained and used to train uh, most of our leaders are graduates and so on. And today we are seeing the productivity. So we, these trainings are offered to, for everyone. That's why today we have uh, leadership programs where we adapt our leadership programs. But again, coming back to your prob program of the African BIP uh, Professional Training Institute, um, we thought of bringing entrepreneurship at the core of our creative destruction, meaning the creativity that our Africans most Africans have, the, the ingenuity that are found within us made us to put our slogan that we need to um, um, uh, push or 
unleash the innovative potentials of Africa, meaning all of us as Africans, we have this innovative potential. But we need to look for mechanisms, tools, and heuristics to help us unleash these innovative potentials within us. And this African uh, Beef Professional Training Center, uh, which is uh, being supported by most of our colleagues, our partners, and professionals abroad and also here in the continent, we are struggling to make sure that we can show uh, a different perspective, make those our young people to go out there as job uh, creators, not job seekers. So one of the most unique things without with this school is that uh, we have 80%, uh, uh, 70 to 80% of uh, practical. Uh, I think you, with your team, you actually saw that we were having our classes. Actually, I think I, it, it's just one of the things, I'm sorry to cut you short, uh, because uh, bef certainly before we continue, I want to just play uh, maybe for some minutes, uh, some uh, shots I recorded from the students and also the administrators to get their own impression about the institution. Certainly, when is the CEO talking, you might show that is some kind of branding, but I think we can hear from the students uh, themselves. Abi Protect is a place to be, and I encourage everyone to be a member of our team for building the world starts now. So I think us here in Abi Protect, we, uh, future leaders of t tomorrow in, in the entrepreneurial world. C'est très important ce que j'étudie ici parce que ça permet d'innover. Je à travers ce que j'étudie ici, je vais apporter du nouveau dans la société. Je vais transformer ce qui est déjà là mais qui a besoin de vivre du nouveau et euh, d'avoir une nouvelle génération. So we have a very practical way of learning. Um, today we studied outside on, uh, we stood up for more than two hours, doing a class standing up for more than two hours, writing and listening to everybody's point of view. So it's not a place for weak people. The particularity with Abib is that we have a context pratique that is carved on the society. It's that that differentiates from different schools that are in a common concept where we follow the bases or we follow something that is elaborated. At Abib Protect, on a la possibilité de voir le côté pratique, d'aller dans le fond des choses, ce qui est plutôt différent de la manière dont on enseigne dans les autres écoles. Ok, welcome back. I hope that you actually heard from the students themselves the kind of appreciation they give about the institution. And I must say, this is an institution. And one thing that is very peculiar about this institution is irrespective of what qualification from ordinary levels, if I get it yes, right, sir, to whatever level you can have something to learn from here and they are not giving you theory they are not giving you some ancient knowledge which is they are giving you practical knowledge which you're going to which uh institutions which businesses are requesting uh, as a basis for their for recruiting their staff so i think that if you're out there you're a grad graduate and you don't just have a job to do and you're looking forward to be an entrepreneur i think that the African Business Information Bank Training uh, Center is actually one of those places where you should actually come. And should you not know where the place is located, I think that if you come to uh, if you come to to uh, Tradex Emana, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to find them just uh, behind. You can also have their contacts that will display on the screen, or you can as well visit their website, or you just uh, research them on Google. You're going to have the African Business Information Bank you're going to have contact information to actually get to this uh, this institution because uh, this is just the right institution for you. Uh, so, sir, what are some of those programs that are uh, offered here? If, you know, uh, we offer numerous programs, adaptable programs speci uh, specifically for uh, context, let's say context, bound, uh, uh, context reality, or I could say specific companies institutions, families can ask for uh, the design of programs uh, to help them uh, reach their reality. But on the other hand, we have programs like digital uh, marketing, we have digital entrepreneurship, we have uh, programs like uh, um, ethical leadership, we have programs 
like uh, project management and project development. If you look at our program, it is practical oriented. It, idea engineering is a very important program for us because we have problems all around. But how do we turn these problems into entrepreneurial venture? So it is a specific programs that we have, which is idea engineering. It's like an engineering program that helps to transform those who have both engineering and soft skills degree to be able to uh, come uh, uh, get a specific training to create new ideas. So if you want an idea, you go in, the, the girls who graduate from idea engineering, they will be able to develop a new idea and give it to you. If you have problems, that's what they will do. That's so powerful. So uh, uh, I, when I just came in, I discovered that uh, you were having a class outside with your students and uh, you were, everybody, all the students were standing up. I, it was so strange to me because I've never in my life seen this kind of uh, a setting. So uh, can you tell us what, why should students be learning standing? You see, the world has proven through the whole ICT uh, uh, driven entrepreneurship or what is called the digital economy that if we borrow ideas from sociology, from the artist, from creative industry, we'll be able to provide creativity. So what we are trying to do with this student, we are not creating students like before. We have to go out there, we, we, they, they should be, have this hunger to create. So if borrowing from the creativity scene, uh, shooting sk uh, a, a scheme, we were doing a training on innovations, ITT innovation. So that's what we do. You go out there, uh, uh, you have to be trained in a real context. So once you stand, the body is so creative. You know, uh, uh, William Shakespeare, uh, I know you are a, a prominent lover of William Shakespeare, he says that uh, uh, the world is a stage. So the world is a stage. So to a stage, you have to create, you know, in a scene, you have to change the stage at every moment. And that's what we want these students to understand. You just need to rebuild the stage at every moment. And that's the interesting thing of these guys doing uh, 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 business innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, the next class is going to be in the market because you're talking about, uh, about uh, products, uh, purchasing and sales of products. Those guys are there, the laboratory is in front of you. So you don't have to be looking at, oh, I have to check uh, what uh, Coca-Cola was created or McDonald's and so on. Kind of be telling somebody in the village about McDonald's where he has not even finished with his, uh, uh, let's say, uh, puff puff and beans or beignet haricot. Talk to him about beignet haricot where he's seen. Talk to him about chopping yamo. Talk to him about uh, kifero and things that he could see. So we are now bringing a new way of training. You see, what they are doing, uh, they we turn everything these guys and all of you out there, you have skills, you, are, you, have, you have skills, God, you have God-given indulged uh, opportunities. The job of teachers today is just to facilitate, help you get out these ideas and use it for, to end a fulfilling life. So that approach of innovation and uh, uh, training, innovative training, that's what we are doing. So we hardly sit in the class and there's one teacher talking to you. No, we turn everything. The students are the one that teaches, and at the end, since you have different perspectives, the role of the, of, the, of the teacher is like a conductor. He tries to get the right things, put, it to, uh, put, it, put the, whole, uh, the different ideas together, and, let, and make sure that lessons learned could be taken away. Oh, that's so, so that's so amazing, and I must tell you that the day the African Business Information Bank Trading Center is going to be organizing a, a, a class in the market, I think that many Cameroonians should turn out to actually see because this is very, very innovative. And I, I must say that one thing that has killed efficiency and certain skills in many of us is that they bring abstract things to us in the classroom. We sit here and we are told about things in other countries that we might never visit. So. An institution like this that teaches us with the things in our immediate environment, I think that we should be able to appreciate. And uh, this is an institution that is necessary, it's very, very necessary to be able to drive the continent to the direction, to the, the vision 2063 needs this kind of institutions, vision 2035 needs this kind of institution to be able to realize. Uh, so, sir, uh, is there any message you want to pass out? I know uh, you have a very tight schedule. And you, you, you see, no one is so resourceful that he can bring transformation uh, to the people of African origin. 
and no one is less resourceful that he cannot contribute to make the life of people of African origin a successful one. So it is very important for us, all of us here, to contribute to make sure that we can unleash the innovative potentials of Africans. We can write a new chapter in Afri uh, on Africans' position in today's global economy. We can help some of our young people that were wrongly oriented uh, so that they should uh, look for opportunities around the continent and also provide solutions for it. So the African Business Information Bank, what we are doing, we hope to partner with you. We hope to uh, discover new ways of, of sharing our ideas with young people. We hope to extend our activities in the different part of the continent. So if you are interested to be partners to African Business Information Bank, we are hoping to, be, to work with you. We are extending our activities in the CEMAP regions and others. So we are the, the ECAS region, meaning the Economic Community of Central African State. We are struggling now to make sure that in 11 countries, we are uh, fully uh, uh, engaged in it. But also, we should never forget that the ultimate goals of our students or uh, training institute, which is at the center of my, of my um, uh, philosophy, is that students should have a fulfilling life. So we hope to make sure that our students uh, should be able to go out of our training and have those companies. That is why the African Business Information Bank today, all the graduates, we have, we have kept an endowed fund to invest in their project. We are not just investing and going away. We are staying in the project as uh, successful partners because as paradigm shifts, we find students who paid thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of CFA and other money to, and go to these big institutions, but at the end when they graduate, these students feel they are empty. We want you not to go out of our school feeling empty. There's, we hope that uh, by being with us, uh, you'll be able to develop in the first three months more than 18 projects which is independent of your final projects. So this is what we have for you. Young people, if you are doubting what you want to do, believe you have something, maybe somehow, somewhere, we were not able to determine the talent in you. That is why we are not just only giving educational, uh, uh, professional and vocational training, but we are also there to diagnose and understand uh, the competencies which you have and then we try to build a new portfolio for you so you can better sell yourself and develop initiative to support people or sell your skills uh, uh, to help develop different products. You heard the CEO of the African Business Information Bank, Dr. Kennedy Tumenta, who has been talking to us for some time now. Like I said, you remember to come to this institution. He has coached me and I've learned a lot from him. If you have a business which is not working well, if you have a business you feel that there's a challenge with the business model, start rushing to the African Business Information Bank because you are going to have the right solution to keep your business, to take your business to, the, to another level. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, as we're signing out, goodbye. And remember to subscribe to our channels. Remember to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook as well as the African Business Information Bank so that you can always be able to get updates on our activities. Thank you so much.